Welcome to e Know How. In this video, uh, we will look at how a CMOS delay cell is constructed. The delay cell we are talking about is, uh, you know, inserts a delay of the order of a few nanoseconds to tens of nanoseconds. So tens, tens of nanoseconds. So, uh, which means like you say example, you could have a delay of uh, 10 nanoseconds or you could have a delay of 50 nanoseconds, for example. So how do we build a cell uh, using uh, CMOS, uh, uh, CMOS gates and uh, CMOS transistors? So to get a delay cell, what we rely on is we rely on an RC delay, an RC delay. So what we can do is to obtain the delay, we can have an inverter with weak P and N channels. So this is an inverter. So you have VDD here, ground. And you could have a weaker P channel and a weaker N channel. And then if you load this output with a capacitor, which is a CMOS capacitor, and I will show you how this capacitor could be realized. So we could basically realize the capacitor using just N device like this to ground. Or you could use a combination of N and P. So we have this N and we have a P device which is tied to VDD this way. So a P channel and an N channel. So this is one way to do it and this is VDD. Or you could actually do a MOS capacitor which I will talk about in a different video. A MOS capacitor. So which usually built is in the N in N well. So it's N plus in N well. So we use a MOS capacitor. I will talk about that in a different video. So now let's assume there is a capacitor. And uh, what we mean by weak, uh, weak transistors are basically you could have a larger channel length, lower W, lower W or a higher L. So you make the devices weak. So what happens is you have an on resistance for this. So there is an R on P here and R on N. So when this uh, node is getting charged up, this node is getting charged up, R on P comes into picture and with this node is getting discharged this way, it's getting charged to VDD, R on P comes into picture. And when it is discharging, R on N comes into picture. So if you look at the time constant, so charging is, uh, so you will have R on P multiplied by the capacitance C here and discharging is R on N multiplied by C. So that is the, that's how you can get a delay from the input to the output. So you can delay it, but now this is not enough. You need to clean it up and also you need to make it better because now what happens is if you have a rising edge on the input, you have a falling edge at the output. So falling edge, you have R on N multiplied by C coming into picture. Now assume you have a rising edge at the input here. So you have a rising edge at the, you have a, sorry, uh, let me erase this. So you have a falling edge at the input. You have a falling edge at the input. And so you will have a rising edge at the output. In this case, what happens is the, the time constant that comes into picture is R on P multiplied by C. So these could be a little bit different, even though you try to make it the same, they could be different. So the best way to do this is actually put two of these in series. Then what happens is, so now you have the delay cells. So you have the two inverters. So you have one cell here, and then you put the similar one in series, the same one exactly. You have the same channel 
widths and lengths and the same capacitor size here. So, so you have this and this output is connected to the input here. So now what happens is basically you got C here and you got the same W over L ratios for these two devices. So now, now let's look at the rising edge here. You get a rising edge here, you get a falling edge here, and you get a rising edge here. So what happens is this, for this delay cell here, you're looking at a falling edge. So where basically this device is active, and for this, uh, or basically this device is discharging the capacitor here. And here, you, this device is charging the capacitor. So you got both the time constants included in, in the same thing. Now, if you looked at, say, for example, you looked at uh, falling edge here, you have a rising edge here, and you have a falling edge here. So, which means basically, so this device is charging the capacitor, and then this, this device is discharging the capacitor. So you got both the edges included in this. Now, to clean this up, what we have to do is to make a more elegant solution. You put an inverter in the front, so we call this input, and take this and uh, to make it a better edge with a good transition time. You put an inverter at the output, one or two, you could put two, two, at, two at the input and two at the output. So this is your complete delay cell between in and out. So if you have in looking like this, the out will look like there is a delay inserted and that delay would be almost the same for rising and falling edges because we used two, number one and number two, two delay elements and they act in opposite ways like say when, when you have a falling edge here, you have a rising edge here and if you have a rising edge here, you have a falling edge here. So that way the delays would be the same. So from here to here, if you take the time here and time here, all these times would be TD. TD will be the delay, nanoseconds. So that's how we construct a CMOS delay cell.